Hello everybody, welcome to our final lesson in this unit. Our textbook does not include this in chapter one, but uh, I think there's value in throwing these things in. Potentially everything on this is uh, stuff you've learned before, but uh, we will do it officially here in this geometry class now. Um, don't, I, I know it's extremely humid in here, uh, and I'm a little bit sweaty, you may be too, so um, anyway, we'll do the best we can. Hopefully that won't distract you from your learning. All right, so what is a triangle? Well, officially, a triangle is a polygon with three sides and then, therefore, three angles. Tri-angles. Most people say it means three sides, three angles. That's what, what it kind of means. So what this means, there are three segments that form the sides. Um, over here, we got these three segments, X segment XY, segment XZ, segment YZ, form the three sides of that triangle. And then we have three non-collinear vertices. If they were collinear, well, you wouldn't have a triangle. Um, what are our vertices? They're points X, Y, and Z in our diagram over here. Uh, so we have these three angles. We can name these three angles by just their single letter because there's only two segments coming out of each of these segment, uh, each of these vertices. So we can name those angles by just one letter. Okay, that was pretty basic. Now, triangles can be classified uh, two ways. Every single triangle can be classified by sides and angles. Okay, how are sides classified? Well, by the number of congruent sides. If a triangle has no congruent sides, that's called scalene. And uh, here's how you'd represent this. You draw a triangle, and then the markings is the key. Having one tick mark versus two tick marks versus three tick marks tells me that this side, this side, and this side, those three sides have different lengths. Okay, how it's marked is gonna be our key. An isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. So if you draw a triangle, uh, that might appear to be isosceles, but until we mark it this way with one tick mark and one tick mark and then another one with two, that shows us that two sides have the same length, They're con two sides are congruent, and the third one is not. Uh, there's just another version of it. Okay? Uh, and then if there's three congruent sides, that's called equilateral. Um, and there is what that looks like. That's, you're, there's, I think there's some familiarity coming from what I'm talking about now. Now, with respect to the angles, uh, triangles can be classified by its biggest angle, its largest angle. So a triangle is acute if all three angles are acute, if the biggest angle is an acute one. Now, it's, we can't mark these unless we actually put angle measures in there, which, which is okay. Uh, obtuse triangles, um, to, it would have one obtuse triangles and then therefore two acute uh, angles. I, I, misspoke earlier. So if, if this one angle is obtuse, it kind of clearly is, and that's an obtuse triangle. There's another one. And finally, a right triangle has one right triangle and two acute. Uh, I said that again. One right angle and two acute angles. So a single triangle can be, uh, we'll, we'll have one of these categories and then another one of these categories. There's one other special case with respect to angles, equiangular. Well, that's an acute uh, triangle because all the angles are 60 degrees. We've already talked about this a little bit, where equilateral triangles will always be equiangular. They go together. Not the case for other shapes, but triangles, if it's equilateral, it's equiangular. Okay? We talked about the word regular as well. So, uh, one thing I'll have you do is recognize these things, but uh, it takes a little step further with the understanding if you can draw it. So, I want you to go ahead and try to just make a sketch of these four types of triangles and see what you come up with, and then I'll tell you what's right and wrong. Pause the video. Okay, so a right isosceles triangle should look something like this. What it can't look like, and we'll talk about this more in class two, is that the side that's furthest away from the right angle, that's opposite the right angle, is, has to be the longest side of the triangle. So those two, it can't be the same length as this other one. So if you drew this one right here, uh, that's, it's not going to end up working. The two congruent sides have to be the two, they're called legs, of the right triangle. Okay? An acute scaling triangle, it actually doesn't really matter much how you draw as long as you draw three acute angles and then mark them um, as all having different lengths. Equilateral triangle and equilangular, well, that is what it, what it is. And then this one says an isosceles 
um, obtuse triangle. Well, there's have an obtuse angle. Um, likewise with the isosceles right triangle opposite the biggest angle, opposite the, uh, the obtuse angle can't be, the, has to be the biggest side rather. Opposite the biggest angle has to be the biggest side, so it can't be congruent then with one of these other sides. We'll talk way more about that uh, as we go through this. Anyway, that's, so there's the first taste of drawing those. Um, now on to a really important part of our lesson, the triangle sum theorem. Uh, the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. That is a fact, okay? So if you're missing an angle, like here in an example, so those three angles together have to add up to equal 180, so we can make that equation and solve, subtract 130 from 180. That missing angle has to be 50. You may want to double check and make sure that 50 plus 85 plus 45 equals 180. And of course it does. Uh, what if you have algebraic expressions like these? Well, the same thing. The sum of these, x plus 3x plus 80, has to equal 180 degrees. We have an equation. We can solve it. We get that x equals 25. Okay? There's a misprint. Find the value of x angle. Find the value of x. Okay? So, based on that, see if you can answer 4, 5, 6, and 7. Don't you like triangles? Triangles are good, so um, what I'd like for you to do right now is just, I, I hope you're trying your best. If you'll write the word try right here, just T-R-Y, try right there. Thank you very much. So these are the answers to those questions. Okay. Other side of the page, uh, while we're talking about angle sums, let's talk about quadrilaterals. Well, quadrilaterals is a polygon with four congruent sides, therefore four congruent angles. It has four segments, which are sides, and four non-collinear vertices. Okay. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Squadrilateral has got four sides, four angles. The sum is 360 degrees. So the exact same idea as what we did for triangles, except the four angles have to add up equal 360. I bet you can do 8, 9, and 10 without further explanation. Give it a shot. Did you get 35 degrees, 115 degrees, and 70 degrees? I hope so. If not, we'll talk more about it in class. Mark them and we'll come see me. It'll be good. Now, circles. You know some things about circles, but this will be the, the most challenging part of what we got going on. Well, let's talk about what a circle is. It's the set of all points that are equidistant from a given point, which is called the center. So in this case, R is the center of the circle. We actually could call this circle R. Um, the distance from the center to the points on the circle is called the radius. So and it's, that is the equal distant distance that we're talking about. The radius is that distance. So this is a radius, this is also a radius, this is also a radius. Those distances are congruent. The radius equals the radius inside of the circle. A segment that contains the center within points on the circle is called a diameter. So it goes all the way through the center and it is a segment um, it's called a, which is called a chord that, that contains the center. Okay, diameter. A diameter's midpoint is the center and is made of two radii. So 2R equals D. The diameter equals two radii. Now there's two important formulas here that we need to, to know. The circumference, which is like the perimeter. Perimeter means the sides added up together. Well, circles don't have sides, so it's got its own word. Is pi, which is the approximately 3.1412, et cetera, et cetera, times the diameter. Or, or since the radius equals, or two radius, radii equals one diameter, we also call it two times pi times radius. Two times radius times pi is um, where that comes from. Okay? So it's the same thing. The area of the circle, pi r squared. I have a feeling you've seen these before, but we've got to know them backwards and forwards. Speaking of backwards and forwards, take a look at these examples. I'm going to do 10 through 13 with you and let you try the others. So, on number 10, it gives us that 12 pi is the circumference. That means that pi times the diameter is equal to 12 times pi. If 12 times pi equals pi times the diameter, what must the diameter equal? 12. The diameter is 12, the number that's being multiplied with pi. If the diameter is 12, then the radius is 6. Then the area is pi times the radius squared. The radius squared is 36, so you get 36 pi. 
I mean, unit squared, if we'll, we'll talk about that, but yes, 36 pi unit squared would be the answer. That's if we started with the diameter, well, the circumference is the diameter times pi, so it becomes 16 pi. The radius is half the diameter. The area is going to be the radius squared times pi, 64 times pi. If we start with the radius, well, you can just kind of go over it whichever way you want here, but the, the, the diameter would be 6. Uh, double the radius times pi is, uh, or the diameter times pi is 6 pi. 3 squared is 9, so we get 9 pi. Now, 16 pi is equal to the radius squared, so 16 is equal to the radius squared. The radius must therefore equal 4. The diameter is 8. The circumference is 8 times pi. So, given any which one of these things, I'm going to want you to be able to go backwards and forwards. Uh, it becomes really easy. If it doesn't feel easy yet, it will soon enough. But go ahead and I want you to try 15 through 17, or 14 through 17. Yes, I know 16 has a fraction. I think you can handle it. Did you get these answers? So half, if the radius is, is half, then the diameter is 1, so 1 times pi is pi. How do you square this? Well, 1, four, one half times 1 half is 1 fourth, so it's 1 fourth pi is the answer there. Um, these questions are really no different than these. It just asks you for something specific. See if you can answer them. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Hmm. We'll see how you did. Get some rest. There's a lot going on.